Hey, hey, I'm V. How many of you are struggling with figuring out your plans for the future? It can be a scary thought. Where do I go to college? What am I going to do for a career? Where am I going to live? Who am I going to be friends with? Where am I gonna to go to high school? Okay, okay. I'm not trying to scare you off, but if you're feeling those, just know you're not alone. We all go through life having those same questions. And if you're thinking you've got everything planned out, have you talked to God about those plans? You might have the right plans, but only God knows the right path you're going to take. God created each of us with a calling and a purpose, and sometimes we make our own plans and they don't line up with God's plan for us. In my life, I studied to actually be a nurse. I went to med school, I actually got a certificate in it, I thought that this is what I'm gonna do. Yep, this is gonna be my life, this is what I'm gonna do. And now I work in ministry. God has given me these skills of nursing, but his plan took me somewhere totally different. The important thing to know is that God has a plan for you. Even if you're not sure you know what it is yet, it's there. He made this plan when you were created. So even if your plans change, just know that God makes it work for the good of those who are followers of Jesus. We see that in Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Romans 8, 28. As followers of Jesus, we are called according to his plan and purpose. And if you're not a follower of Jesus, I want you to know that God has a good, pleasing and perfect plan for your life too. He wants you to live in the plan he created for you long ago. But the first step to knowing his plan and purpose for your life is making him the leader of your life. So today, be open to hearing my words. Today, I want you to remember this one thing. We are called. I think we all want to feel called to do something and know that we have a purpose. That's human nature. We want to belong. When we put our faith in Jesus, we are the church and we are called. Our church has a purpose that God has called us to and each of us as individuals has a call as part of his church. When we belong to him, we have a place, purpose, and call in his church. The hardest part is finding the clarity in what his plans are. Many people struggle with having clarity of God's purpose or call for their life. We struggle with not only knowing but owning his purpose because we all make mistakes and those can make us feel stuck. The church is in need of our unique purpose and skills. The church needs us to belong so we can help build up the church. As the church body, we suffer when someone is sitting by and not living as a participant. When we know and understand God's calling for our lives, not only does it make us feel amazing and fulfilled, but it helps the church. It helps build up the church and bring life to the church. Remember, as followers of Jesus, we belong to each other and need each other. Remember, we are called. Say that with me, we are called. How do we begin to understand God's calling for our lives? Well, number one, it's listen. I know that sounds easier said than done. And for me, it makes me not want to listen, honestly. But as followers of Jesus, we have to always be listening to God. And the crazy part is that God communicates with us through so many different ways and things. You might dream of something, you might hear someone say something to you, you might just feel that feeling in the pit of your stomach. God is creative and he wants us to listen. And if we're not listening, he's going to make us listen by getting louder and louder. When we become followers of Jesus, his spirit lives within us and his spirit helps lead and guide us. We're going to look at the story of Samuel. Samuel faithfully performed his duty every night in the tabernacle. Let's read his story. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. 
and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied. What is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Samuel had heard a voice calling out his name. He ran to Eli because Eli was the only other person there. So obviously it was Eli. That makes sense, right? But it wasn't Eli. The story continues. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Samuel is listening. He hears his name being called, but again, it's not Eli. So Samuel is not really listening to the right person. Let's keep reading though. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time and once again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. Samuel is the perfect example of listening, but not really. He's listening, but he is not focused on who is speaking to him. It's like our lives when we hear God telling us something and we go find another solution to what we're hearing. It's like God calling me to ministry and I'm going, I hear you, God, but I go and do something else with my life. God wants us to focus on and listen to him. To do that, we must have a relationship with him first. We have to make Jesus the leader of our lives so we can have the right relationship with God. Then we can focus and dig into what God has planned for us. Remember, we are called. Say that with me. We are called. How do we begin to understand God's calling for our lives? Number one was listen. Number two is obey. Again, another word that can be off-putting for us, obeying is not the easiest thing to do. But if we know what God has planned for us and we understand the purpose he has created us with and we don't live in it or obey him, then his purpose is pointless. We have to obey him. We're going to see Samuel again listen and he's going to hear some bad news. But will he obey in sharing the bad news? And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do a shocking thing to Israel. I am going to carry out all of my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. God trusts that Samuel will listen to him and obey him. God trusts Samuel with bad news for Eli. And the very next day, Samuel tells Eli the bad news. He completely obeys God. And we see that in 1 Samuel 3.18. So Samuel told Eli everything. He didn't hold anything back. It is the Lord's will, Eli replied. Let him do what he thinks best. 1 Samuel 3.18. Samuel doesn't hold anything back. When it comes to our lives, we want to feel we have purpose and that our lives have meaning. God wants us to live fulfilled and full of purpose. He created us to live like that. It's his plan for each of us. Remember, we are called. God has a calling for us and we have to listen to him to know and understand what that calling is. And as you begin to understand God's calling for you, obey him and live in that calling and purpose. When you begin living in the call and purpose God has for you, you have excitement to live each day. When you realize and recognize you're part of the church, you will be invested in the church. And as you do that, you build up the church. Rather than living with an internal struggle, you will live with confidence in Christ and others are going to see your life transform and wonder what you're doing different. 
They're going to want what you have and you'll have the opportunity to share with them the love of Christ. Our memory verse is a great reminder of how we can belong and help others belong. Start practicing it and putting it into memory. Let's say it together now. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. We are called. Say that with me. We are called. Your challenge this week is to be like Samuel. Every morning, just tell God that you are listening for him and his purpose for your life. Let's pray. Dear God, whether we know our purpose, whether we don't know our purpose, just help us wake up each day this week and just be obedient and trust you and just let us open our ears to whatever you have for us, whether that is how to live out our purpose or whether that is to discover our purpose. We know that you have a perfect plan for our lives and we can't wait to start living it out for you. Amen. Remember, we are called. We'll see you next week.